uh, don't remember the exact words, but you know, are you crazy? Why do you want to work in the restaurant business? And I said, I explained that I was so passionate about restaurants, that's all I could think about. And um, he said, well, if you want to be in this business, you need to learn how to cook. So he took me into the kitchen shortly after and um, showed me how to fillet a big salmon and uh, taught me how to make mozzarella and pasta and ravioli and you know, add a lot of salt to things. You, you get like squeaking. You get you know, really uh, reprimanded if you didn't use a lot of salt and a ton of olive oil. I mean, things were swimming in olive oil. Even though this was a Mediterranean diet, it was, it was very heavy. And, so I really kind of liked those, uh, those tricks I was learning about flavor and so much that I went to a French cooking school and learned all about butter and more salt and flour and cream and, um, and, and cooking sweetbreads and uh, all sorts of other great things. And um, went to a French restaurant and that there at the beginning of my shift at every day, which started at noon and went till midnight for about $4 an hour, um, was basically just adding butter, pounds and pounds and pounds of butter to things. And um, so my passion for this, this restaurant business and, and socializing, I was always a little shy, so being a chef was a good way to be social, but still be behind the scenes a little bit. And my passion for this sort of uh, this feeding people and um, learning how to make food taste great led me down the path of what's going on with traditional cuisine. And after um, a few years of that, I discovered that, you know, well, I can do this and open a number of restaurants. And it took me a few years um, to realize why I wasn't happy. Uh, and also, one fundamental issue that I had with, with food and restaurants was that I'd see these chefs who were, you know, in other careers in architecture and law and medicine and many other, you know, writers. And most people in their careers, as they go on, they get more and more inspired and uh, more and more artistic and free and happy. And the chefs, that's not the case. You know, most of the chefs um, who had been very on in their careers were grumpy and angry and alcoholics and really unhealthy people on every level. And I didn't really understand that, but I knew I, I didn't want to go down that path. Um, so I, you know, I guess I was a student of uh, the life of a chef, and I just paid very close attention to, um, to what happened. And it was subconscious for quite a few years. And, uh, but eventually, you know, it, um, through a series of events and through a lot of um, life-changing um, you know, opportunities to, to see how different foods and experiences made me feel, I realized that they're the, 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 what chefs do, and what a lot of rest, what most restaurants and a lot of chefs do is fundamentally flawed in that, you know, feeding people shouldn't mean harming them, it should mean uh, healing them and nourishing them. The food can still taste good and be beautiful. And so at a certain point in my career, when I was introduced to raw food, um, even though I was a very unlikely candidate to be a vegetarian, having been a hunter since the age of 10, um, hunted and fished all my life and uh, hated vegetables until I was about 25. Um, it, still made, it still made sense and as I slowly embraced it, um, it not only made sense, but it, it not only uh, recaptured this passion that I had earlier in my career, but crystallized in a way that I very uh, clearly understood what would inspire me and hopefully um, help other people and you know allow me to uh, reach the world in a different way. So. When people ask me uh, another question that comes up, other than why are you a chef, uh, why are you in Oklahoma? That comes mm -hmm. up every day. Um, every time I'm visiting here or telling people where our business is, um, they're like, well, why did you choose Oklahoma? And um, well, partly we chose Oklahoma, partly Oklahoma chose us. But that's, um, that's exactly why, because uh, there is, a, I believe, a, a flaw in the food supply chain. And, how we think about and understand food, and everybody thinks that to eat healthy is compromising. And um, I, I, you know, I get in this, I wouldn't call it an argument, I get in this conversation every day with people about, well, we've been cooking meat, or we've been doing this, or, you know, for uh, thousands of years. And, um, you know, I just refer to the dinosaurs. I mean, just because we did something doesn't mean that it's, that it's right. We sometimes have to change, take a look around at the health of our. Um, different communities uh, here and, and throughout the world. I was last week in, in Asia and Australia and um, on the West Coast and on the East Coast just in the last two weeks and the same health issues and the same concern about health and people my age taking a lot of medication when they don't really need to. It's, uh, it's happening everywhere and I believe, you know, 
as diners, and we're responsible with our choices, but also as chefs, we're really responsible for how we feed people, because you can get very tricky with food and make it taste really good and healthy, and sometimes it's not. Um, and that's why you know we stick to our mission here. Some of you may have heard the rumor a few months ago that we decided to add heat and add cooking, and um, I got an email a couple of days ago, actually, about uh, asking when we were adding our grill. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we thought about it at one time, uh, just to appeal to a broader audience, but at the end of the day, it conflicted with our mission. Um, and our mission is really to serve food in its healthiest state. And this isn't a, an attack on a cooked uh, grilled asparagus at all. It's just that food, when it's, when it's in its raw state, not heated above uh, 105 or 118 degrees, it does have the most nutrients and enzymes. And in many cases, it needs to be sprouted or so forth. But, um, we decided really to embrace our mission and work very hard to um, make this food appealing to a broader audience and to the world. And um, so we're we're here because this is one of many places in the world that uh, actually allows us to reach people in a different way to give them something that they haven't had before and hopefully change their life in one way or another. Um, whether it be somebody who work here or visit here or passing through uh, the city and having a, an experience different than what they. Um, thought they might have. So our, our relaunch and our new menu is our long uh, planned effort to broaden our reach. Uh, as many of you know, we have an academy next door and we've, um, I don't know the number, it might be 20 or 25 countries. Uh, we've had students from all over the world already, which we're thrilled about. Very talented, um, passionate, and, and really intelligent people who are coming here. So it's, it's great to see that come together under one roof. And with our menu, um, raw food is, you know, gourmet raw food is not that old. So we've we've had to really challenge ourselves um, creatively and, and scientifically to develop the, the dishes that, um, you know, we our, our big saying in the kitchen, we don't say it in the dining room, but our big thing in the kitchen is, that's great, it doesn't taste raw. And we do have a couple dishes on the menu that are deliberately raw, that it's meant to taste like a raw beef or a raw turnip. But, the idea of when we say that is to make it palatable and enjoyable to eat, easy to digest. And um, you know, some of the earlier dishes I made with raw food, you definitely wouldn't be here tonight uh, if I ever tried to serve them. So we've um, several things have allowed us to expand what we do. First of all, our number one thing that is required to make raw food really exciting and great is a good product. It's been, a, it's been a challenge because it's seasonal here and the growing season was hard to predict and the products um, were hard to find, but slowly but surely we're learning to communicate with smaller uh, suppliers and some local farmers to get certain ingredients and hopefully over time that will be all of our menu. It will be you know, almost all uh, local and sustainable. But that's one of our main goals um, that will take continue to take time and a lot of effort. And the second part of that is building a team, which we have a lot of very talented people here um, who are now starting to understand these techniques and expand on the original um, mission of what we did. And you know, the third part is really the creative part. And we didn't have time when we opened as much to create because we're trying to build and, and get open and figure out what to do. So we had the last few months to, uh, to try to create this menu. And it started off uh, a little bit esoteric and maybe a little uh, fussy a little too poetic, and we, we toned it down and it started to make sense um, in the, the language on the menu. There's some things we struggle with, and we call something shrimp or not, even though it's not a fish. We decided to just let go of the rules and not be too frilly and just try to make food that you know is, is pleasant to eat on a daily basis and taste good. So I encourage you tonight to uh, enjoy our new menu. Be patient because it's only the, it's the first night, the first formal night of our full menu, and uh, we have a nice crowd here, so. Some of your tables may come out a little slower than others. And the other thing, if you're at a big table, try to uh, to share a few different dishes as opposed to, um, I remember the restaurant we opened in New York, we had one dish, and if we had 120 people, 80 would have that dish. <laughs> so nothing wrong with the dish, but um, I'd like you to try a few different yeah. things, and I'd also like our team to, to get used to experimenting with them. And um, and that's about it. I just hope you uh, enjoy it and uh, help, uh, help us reach more people and, and who are interested in being healthy while still enjoying their, their uh, gourmet experiences, their dietary experiences. And if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask. I think you're all hungry. Yeah. <laughs> the, the 
question was, are we planning to do any uh, fundraising events? Um, we participate in a lot of charity events, so I, I'm sure for the for certain events we definitely would be. Um, I think you know it seems like once a month or every other month we're we're participating in something. So certainly, especially if it relates to health and nutrition and diabetes and awareness and so forth. Food is um, is inherently um, gluten free, with the exception of a couple of ingredients, like a, a namashoyu um, soy product may have gluten, and um, uh, oat groats may. But am I missing anything, Megan? Megan knows this very well. This is Megan. She's our academy director. She's been with us since we opened, and also a graduate of the academy in the first uh, course. It's inherently a gluten-free diet too. Sorry about the squeaking, I have to stay exactly between these two. Uh, the, um, the diet is inherently gluten-free. It's also dairy-free. Uh, for anyone who's lactose intolerant, there's absolutely no dairy in, um, in the premises that I'm aware of. Um, and um, it's kosher, although we're not certified kosher. Raw cuisine is actually um, is kosher. We were, one restaurant I did, we were kosher. And, uh, you know, it's there, there are many things that make it very, um, you know, perfect for anybody. Unless you have a nut allergy, then you're in the wrong restaurant. <laughs> yeah. How about organic? Well, we, we've, it's a challenge we've had since we opened to get organic Oklahoma, here. Yeah. Um, more and more, though, we're finding um, some local farmers for greens and sprouts and wheatgrass. They're not all, they don't all go through the process of certifying. Yeah. Um, a lot of our dry goods and you know, so forth are organic. I mean, our goal is to be as organic as possible. And when I say that, I don't mean it has to be certified organic, but at least, um, you know, grown with organic and sustainability in mind. And um, it's, it's definitely, that's why I say product is our number one thing. Um, a lot of things that we have on the menu today, we wouldn't have been able to do six months ago just because we couldn't, we didn't have access to the ingredients. It was definitely a challenge in the beginning. There are many advantages to being um, where we are. Uh, on the, you know, on the other hand, there are some challenges, and one of them are the are the ingredients. Yeah, I'm from California, so it's easy to get. Yeah, it. Santa Monica Farmers Market. Oh, really? Yeah, that's whatever. where they have all a lot of the raw great. food restaurants, Santa Monica. Yeah. 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 Real food daily. Well, enjoy your dinner. Um, as I said, try to try to share if you're at a larger table, and uh, and we'll, we'll move as quickly as we can. I think we're pretty prepared, but it's our first night, so a couple of hiccups here and there with with uh, specific recipes, but also the speed of them. Uh, but thank you for being here to support our, our new menu and our new uh, relaunch, and for you know, the many of you, I recognize you, so thank you for supporting us over these last two years, and we look forward to the next uh, 13 or 20. Thank you. Thank you.